Hello, and welcome to Andy Fancher Presents, where today we head out to St. Paul, Texas to meet a World War II veteran and Purple Heart recipient named Marvin Spoons. In 1944, Marvin left America under the 511th Parachute Infantry for roughly one year in the war-torn Pacific. Today, Marvin shares the details for his first and last time on camera. Although today's events may not be the first thing on his mind, Marvin H. Spoontz Jr.'s surreal World War II memories have sustained time and presently remain vivid and impressionable. About the uh, middle of 1943, right after I tried high school, they called me in for the drought. At age 19, Marvin left the small town of Temple for two years in the U.S. Army. After completing 16 weeks of mandatory basic training, he took a noteworthy turn in his military career. I had to change from the Army to the paratroopers. Why'd you change to the paratroopers? Somebody, somebody mentioned, well, you get paid extra money. <laughs> he was sent to Camp McCall in Richmond County, South Carolina, for training under the 11th Airborne. It wasn't too bad. I didn't weigh very much. I weighed about 120 pounds, and that was the limit for our trippers. He obtained his wings and was assigned to the 511th Parachute Infantry, I Company, 1st Platoon. Soon after, Marvin and his unit were sent to San Francisco for deployment, unknown of their overseas destination. We pulled out into the ocean under the Golden Gate Bridge. Then we knew where we were going. After 20 days at sea, the 511th landed in New Guinea. Marvin stayed for a total of six non-combative months before leaving for the eastern Philippine island of Leyte. Starting November 11th of 1944, off the Philippine island of Leyte was the grueling Battle of Ormac Bay a series of high casualty engagements between the United States and Imperial Japan. On November 18th, Marvin and his first platoon landed on Leyte, a territory which was currently armed with over 20,000 Japanese soldiers. And if you watched, you could always tell when something was going to happen. You didn't know what. On December 15th, 27 days after landing, Marvin engaged in his first and last firefight. Sergeant called out and says, get your gear together. Says, it's about that time. The destination was an occupied village right off Ormoc's war-torn bay. My buddy hollered at me, said, do, do you need reinforcements? I said, I haven't seen very many yet. And then about that time, they, they opened up on me. Imperial enemy began firing with heavy weaponry on the men of 511th. They had a bunch of palm trees all along there, and he shattered them up. It's hard to believe, but I didn't know it hit. When Marvin had extended his arm to fire his M1, an enemy bullet went straight through his wrist. My M1, it rifled with in several pieces. And my buddy says, are you hit? I said, I don't think so. Then, then I changed my mind. I could feel that blood dripping off of my fingers. Out of the 511th, 18 men were injured and eight were killed on this day. Marvin was successfully evacuated from the area, but helplessly stayed an additional two months on Leyte, where his wounded arm became infected with gangrene. Marvin was eventually sent back to America, where he received good medical attention from four separate hospitals. In July of 1945, he was deemed no longer medically fit for the Army, and honorably discharged soon after. And sadly, on June 26th of 2017, 
12 days after our interview, Marvin H. Spoonce Jr. passed away. He was 92.